Hey, what's up everyone? It's Zoldek. Today we are gonna speak about PvE in New World Eterna, mostly the dungeon, speedrun, or whatever you want to call them. I did a lot of leaderboard top one in this game, but right now we are just going to speak about how to make dungeon easier in general. It's not only for speedrunner, it's just for everyone who want to make dungeon in this game easier. Alright, so let's dive straight into it. Alright, so the conditioning is kinda the best perk for mutation in game because the mob are gaining some like 50% of their damage is convert into nature as example if it's a nature mutation so by having some nature conditioning you're gonna take less damage by the hit and then there's the gem uh the gem if you put some gem in your armor you can go over 50% um resistance of elemental but there's no other way to go over 50 percent elemental if you use whatever like fortify or whatever it's go at 50 percent elemental maximum resistance but with your gem it can go higher so elle aversion is pretty good because of this uh, elle aversion is just uh, from the distance attack it's not from the mob that hits you like this so it's gonna be good for mob that shoot you with arrow because their arrow gonna have 50% in elemental so it's gonna block 50% of the damage of the mob that's gonna shoot you arrow and the spells and etc the mob are gonna put some stuff on the floor the mutation damage uh maybe it's still gonna do effect during the moment it was having an effect on that but maybe it's not gonna do it anymore i don't know about new world elder dump on this but la version supposed to help you a bit for what's on the floor shirking fortification is working on the mobs so shirking fortification is a good perk if you don't have anything else freedom is good into ice and nature mutation because in ice and nature mutation you get rooted and freedom gonna help you to get rooted unrooted faster so if you are thinking make sure to look a video before doing a speed run because if you don't know the run and you're the tank the speed run is just over we need you to know what you're doing all right the cc chain are really important uh, if we all use the sweep at the same time, the mob is just going to go back up and it's not going to work. If I use my sweep and then you use your sweep two or three seconds after, the mob going to fall, it's going to go back up, it's going to fall. And this is what the mob is supposed to look like non-stop. Just doing that and falling, it's not supposed to do that. And, and then you see... If you stagger a mob a couple of times, he's going to get uh, out of the staggers real quick, so it don't work. And uh, if you want to learn the mob pattern, it, sometimes it's better to do it outside of the dungeon. Like there's some mini boss that sometimes are tricky. You're going to see like in Lazarus, there's a mini boss in the middle that is harder than any other boss into the dungeon. So if you know how to fight it properly into the open world well you're gonna be able to up to fight it properly into the dungeon too because it's the same mob the same pattern same thing all right in new world there's what we call a ren ren reduce the armor it can go up to like 50 percent with a couple stack together and then on the void gauntlet you have another type of ren that go on the top of of him and it doesn't stack with him so it go like on the top of it and this one is 15 percent so if your healer or the dude who have the void gauntlet is using it properly you're gonna do your dungeon almost 15 percent faster so first of all you need to let the tank pull even if you have scorpions thing and it's really fun to pull the shit with it uh you're gonna just ruin everything if you want to pull the stuff make sure you are into a voice call with the tank and make sure the tank agree to your pull because if he don't uh, if he don't have like a taunt ready when you are pulling the stuff you're gonna throw your javelin sting on a mob and then that, that mob gonna go for the healer straight up it's not gonna go for you so yeah this is definitively a problem so for mutation the best healer build is aoe heal whatever other people tell you it's wrong maybe into the new dungeon since uh, the people are divided a lot uh, so to do the element on the side maybe then you can start using the clap 
but uh, the AoE heal gonna be the best into fire mutation, ice mutation, um, into even the void. You see, there's all those puddles on the ground. Is if there's a sacred ground, there's an orb of protection and a beacon on top of it. Man, it's gonna be way easier to survive than the worst build I've seen in mutation is having the clap divine embrace and then sacred ground don't do that it's the worst thing you can do uh yeah just don't do it you the the less worst is this build with the splash of light uh this won't work but it, it's not optimized but it's still gonna work mostly if you have some fire staff user in your group but yeah it's still not uh, optimized but it work uh so for the consumable in this in this uh video i'ma speak about a lot of beginner and advanced tips so don't say it's a beginner video i don't need it there's gonna be a lot of thing uh said into that like your protection that you're gonna see here on the bottom you see there's the elemental resistance and uh you see there's 4.4 on your mutation gear it can go up to 50 percent yes you can maybe scale it more but the cap is 50 percent elemental resistance so make sure you are around that maybe 45 to 50 percent elemental resistance so in mutation 3 is going to be way easier in mutation 2 you can put a bit less but if your group have some trouble it make sure everyone has the gem and things gonna go better uh so the scaling you see you need to have the appropriate gear score because the mob are scaling to it if you are under gear score not you're gonna get fucked it's it's just you're gonna get one tap by mobs and you're not gonna understand why all right so for the consumable there's the powerful learning stone that's here for Tier 4 is kind of usable for M2, but for M3, always use the tier 5. Don't try to make money using less consumable, like smaller one. It, it's it's dumb. Doing mutation gold gonna give you some item to sell, and you're gonna make, make your money back. So make sure to use the biggest coating, the biggest earning stone, the biggest buff that you have, alright? The ward potion in M3 go for the big ward potion in M2 you can go for the M4 but yeah this is it so for the elemental the powerful absorption potion and all those things the infused you just don't need it because if you use it you're gonna use your ward potion buff so just don't use this uh, one of the main thing to do is sometimes to just go look a video on YouTube about the dungeon you are doing and look the whole run because i see many people just pulling the mobs randomly they just go and fight all the mobs while you can do a better run doing the like you're gonna see in depth uh people just yeah you, you need to take care of what you do and if you are doing the wrong thing and you're the tank man uh no wonder why someone is trying to pull stuff on you with the fire staff or the life staff. If you are at the good place at the good time, there's way less chance that someone gonna pull mobs on you. So for the tank, uh, if you don't have leadership, you're almost throwing because uh, when the fight are lasting too long there's more, ch more chance you're gonna die as a tank and the people in your group gonna die so yeah uh, same for the attribute you're supposed to have 200 health and the rest in strength if you put too much strength uh, if you put too much con you're gonna have hard time to get the aggro yes it's fun to have two, 300 con because of the grit but the only way you're gonna have with 200 con to, to keep your grit is more mainly with the hammer so make sure to use your hammer as much as possible to keep your grit on and yeah when you know you're gonna get pushed back man do a shockwave wrecking ball 
you can even put a clear out just to, to make sure you, you stick there um, when you're fighting the enemy as a tank fight them and go backward at the same time while, while fighting them you just attack like that and and you go backward the mobs gonna try to come to you and gonna make sure they're always stacked if you just face tank the mob like that and, and pull into it while hitting they're gonna disperse around you and it's gonna make un unsafe clump because you're gonna rotate around the mob you, the mob's gonna turn and gonna hit the people around because you turn with it so going backward while fighting like that as a tank is like the main strats to just get the mobs to you uh, if the people wait okay i'm gonna remake this one when you pull nobody is supposed to put a heal on you and when you pull nobody is supposed to attack the mob before you are done pulling and doing the taunt so you do your big pull and then you wait for the mob to be at a good distance you do your shockwave first because there's some mob that are still coming to you and then you hit a bit and when all the the mobs are around you then you do defiant stance or accelerated resolve and all the mobs gonna get the aggro so you're gonna get your shockwave pretty quick again after that and then you're gonna be able to get back your accelerated resolve uh, the flail sadly is not the best tank weapon it's still usable but uh, if you are an m3 you're almost better to do uh, guardian shield and hammer uh, if you use the flail you better to do flail and hammer and not flail and sword and shield because if you do flail and sword and shield you're not gonna have enough cc but with flail and hammer you're gonna have enough cc and it have good chance to work but uh, yeah like as you can see there's some empower into the cleric side the empower everything around you but uh, if your tank you're more building into bastion there's only that ability that put uh, empower on your teammate and it's only one teammate but the sword and shield gonna give 10 percent empower to all your group so it makes the sword and shield better and yeah that's sad but that's true so why i use that it's mainly to stay up front of my dps and gain some speed just making sure whoop, i jump in front of them i had leaping strike because i was playing with good people but since you're gonna play with bad people you're gonna need more aggro all right uh if you don't want the slow ability like this one you can go for this it's gonna help you to maintain the threat if I use that, it's only because I want a mob to clump together, and when I do that, they stick clump together, and it helped. Yep. Let's talk about the weapon you're supposed to use into dungeon. So you, I have the PvP build on the spear right now, but uh, if you can go in my video and get the PvE build, I made multiple video about the PvP PvE build on the spear. So yeah. Uh, the spear would be the main the main weapon for dungeon right now it said that the spear is more like the easiest to use into dungeon there's the great sword that does more dps but it's harder to use and like the great sword got a easy attack that does a nice aoe every time you're gonna easy attack so if you use it well you're gonna do more dps than the spear but like I say, if you want to do 5 constitution dungeon, you may be better practice with the spear first. If you're looking for something that is really good and, and just make sure the run is going fast, quick and clean, make sure you have a spear in your hand and if even if everyone has a spear, it's fine. It's like the best weapon right now. Uh, I would say that the Great Axe is the best second weapon because you you kind of need one in your group. The Gravity Well and the Maelstrom just gonna make the clump so much cleaner. The, the Reap too. The Maelstrom and Feebling 
it is amazing. Remember that the weapon perk enfeebling is maybe the most important thing on your weapon or on your armor. The maelstrom enfeebling and the spear enf enfeebling on the enfeebling skewer. That ability right there. So yeah, the DPS on the spear and the clump on the great axe. Your tank is supposed to have the armor, so you're fine. The DPS don't really need the armor. Uh, there's gonna be a hammer that drop with the uh, mighty gavel. Maybe it's gonna be usable for DPS, but it, we we need to see it uh, if they change some stuff on it. But maybe that's gonna be usable. So. Uh, the great sword, the great sword is amazing. Uh, you don't put that build. I make a, I made a tutorial about the great sword too. There's a, some PVE build for the great sword. Uh, if you get into onslaught stance, usually people use relentless rush and skyward slash with the roaring, roaring rupture. So by hitting one of those ability, you're gonna get into the onslaught stance. This is the path of onslaughts, all right. When you are on onslaught stance, the shark wave pull the foe to you to up to three meter. So it helps to climb. It's like a grav well, and it have some enfeebling into it, all right. So you're gonna do that ability, relentless rush you're gonna try to, pos to do it while positioning you at the good place and then you're gonna straight up do the, the adaptive rupture and clamp the mob on you this is the only way to use the great sword and yeah sickening slash can be pretty good into vampiric mutation and uh, nature mutation but overall for the rest you can take it off but yeah if you see the dude in your group with the great sword using other ability than relentless rush skyward slash and roaring rupture he is definitively throwing right so make sure the people do it right and if you see the roaring rupture not doing his effect there's two condition to it people are not doing the unslow stance right or they are doing it when the mob have grit so you're gonna see some mobs gonna get some grit uh the grit is like um so the grit is like an error that you get you get more like white uh, white around you and then when you get that you cannot get staggered like you can get stunned but not stagger and when you have it on you I, it, like it can be on mob and not on people you see what i mean so yeah the grit gonna be like a white aura around the mob and when they are on the grid the gravity well the maelstrom and the all the pull gonna not work so before doing that you need to make sure the mob is not on grid and it's the same with the spear sweep make sure the mob is not on grid if you don't want to waste your ability for no reason make sure the mob are not on grid many times i see people do it when you're gonna use your gravity well you need to make sure to pull the mobs on the mage to pull the mobs on the musket if you just try to pull the mobs together and you ignore the musket onto it it's gonna be messy you can do a reap to get it closer than maelstrom and then it's gonna be even closer and then you do the gravity well and poof it's gonna be into the clump but don't just clump randomly the mobs the main reason is just that if the tank go on the archer and if you pull all the mobs on the archer the mobs all gonna stay there but like the archer gonna stay away from the thing he's never gonna move to the tank so if the tank is on the archer every mob gonna move on the archer gonna create a clump and you guys gonna be able to melt it but yeah if the tank never move around the archer it's never gonna happen so let's speak about the outer weapon i would say that the main used weapon is and you need to use is the spear then the great axe and the great sword and then people are gonna use a lot of the rapier the thing about the rapier with the bleed build 
is it does descend DPS. It's maybe one of the best DPS in game, but it's only single target DPS. So it's good, but uh, there's no fortify. Like you're gonna see on the spear, there's fortify perforate to help you survive and into the passive of uh, the great axe. You get some fortify too, and you get some enfeebling out of it. So there's nothing that's gonna help you survive. No fortify. So it's like running naked into the wild. Uh, make make sure you only have one rapier because uh, you cannot trade the bleed and there's a bleed max stack. So only one rapier per group and even if you don't have a rapier it's fine. The rapier is, is like... It, it's really satisfying to play, it's why the people play it. But it's not an optimized uh, weapon for dungeon. I say that, but the we the, it, the rapier is really good in dungeon. It's just that it's a single target build mostly. And in some dungeon it's going to do really good and in some really bad. And mostly in the boss fight it's going to melt the boss. You're going to see a big difference. But when there's a big clump, uh, sometimes you just wonder where the you're missing a DPS or something. Most of the time the people are going to play rapier with ice wall because on, uh, on some mutation like in dynasty, the ice wall is going to help you to prevent the mob to reach the objective. You're going to see in Genesis there's a tree. If all the mob reach the tree, then uh, the, the tree is broken. Same for the barrel into Dynasty. So yeah, Rapier Ice Gauntlet is very nice. Rapier Void Gauntlet is usable. Mostly into the mutation that you don't need to protect a barrel. You can go with the Void Gauntlet. What happens is if you use the Void Gauntlet, your healer is going to be able to use a Flail. And by using a Flail, you guys are going to have more Enfeebling in your group. And by having more Enfeebling in your group, you can use another composition or whatever. You see what I mean? And the Flail have a... how to say it? A cleanse people. So you can unroot people into the mutation where there's root. There's some portal when you pass through it into Tempest, you get rooted, so you can unroot all your teammates when they pass through the portal, save some time, stuff like this. So sometimes special group camp is what do it. Uh, I've did a lead leaderboard run, top one in Tempest. We had a dude with a bow and a void gauntlet. Uh, yeah, the ice gauntlet and the void gauntlet are mostly the support for the rapier. And you can do the Void Gauntlet Great Axe, but it's not a good build. Nah, don't do Void Gauntlet Great Axe. Yeah, it's not a good build because you're gonna have to do your DPS with the Great Axe. And the, the Great Axe is mainly a clump weapon. You just clump the mob with it. The Hatchet gonna be better into uh, Genesis. But now no one uses it uh, into dungeon, kinda. Uh, I would say it's still a decent DPS, but it lack a lot of CC. So uh, I would put it in like 5 or 6 into my top, because the DPS from it is pretty good. Uh, the fire staff almost the same as the as the Hatchet. It would fight for the 5 or 6 uh, into the dungeon um, stuff. It does better AoE DPS than the Rapier. So it's pretty hard. Uh, I, the rapier is most most liked by the people, but the fire staff is underrated by the people. The thing about that is you have a lot of chance to pull the aggro uh, from the mod, so you need to be aware of what you do. And if you are always pulling the aggro, sometimes it's not only because of the tank, but because you are doing your AoE at the wrong place. Make sure you wait for the end of the pull before attacking the mobs. Make sure you are at the good positionment to see how the things happen and hit the same mobs that the tank hit. If you hit the mobs into the backline because you, were, you are far from the clump and you don't see the thing well enough, you're gonna pull the ads and it's gonna be your fault. This is one thing that is good about being a fire mage into a dungeon is that you don't need to change for boss. There's a lot of people who are going to have like they have melee build and then they're going to take like 5 minutes almost just to change gear in front of the door of the boss. But like you're there with the fire mage you can long range the boss and having you can put up 
to five fire stack with a fire mage on the the boss so having one fire mage is perfect and if you put two fire mage it's not good because you you cannot put 10 fire stack it's only five so you better not trade it with two fire mage and then by benefiting of those fire, fire stack it's good and by having the ig with it fire staff ig you see like i say if you have a rapier void gun clip you're gonna have your healer with a flail and then you're gonna have a fire staff ig and the other gonna be like great axe great sword and then it's gonna be a really good composition and people are just not thinking too much about it because there are so much to use to play like spear and great sword or like spear great axe like that they don't, just don't think about it but yeah those combo are really good so the fire staff void gauntlet is still one of the very good build but it lacks some cc <clears throat> if your tank have hard time to survive no wonder why you have a fire staff and you're you are not helping him you are not putting an uh, enfeebling you are not really helping your team only doing great dps and it's the same for the rapier you are not that much helping your team but at least you have some cc with the fire staff you can use the ice gauntlet and void gauntlet you're gonna have some cc too so be aware of that i would say that the sword and shield is a very good dps weapon too i would put it a six or seven into my list if you put sword and shield and spear it can be a decent combo because you're still gonna have the sweep and you're gonna give some empower to your teammate but remember that it's not one of the best weapon build and it's one of the hardest build to make because you're gonna need a good shield and a good sword with both not the same attribute uh, if you are on your shield you have keen and on your sword you have keen you failed uh, you need a different skill on your sword and your shield because they are not stacking and it's one of the hard build to make but if you can make it right it can be one of the best even top three top four so the bow the bow in mutation is very good for boss fight uh, but outside of the boss fight it's not that good so you can carry one on you and respect before the boss fight and nobody gonna really hate you same for the musket because the musket is a good single target so yeah on the bow you can use rapid shot it's one of the best ability so yeah the bow is usable for boss fight for the rest of the dungeon meh the musket would be probably the last one on my list while the bow would be like the number seven or eight the blunderbuss kind of sucks in dungeon too the blunderbuss uh it threw a lot of pellets so you have the the feeling of doing a lot of aoe dps but it's un it's only gonna hit the target in front of you and it's not gonna hit the target behind them kind of but you know there's that dungeon savage divine where there's some beast and the beasts are weak to trust and the blunderbust is a trust weapon and i did some leaderboard run with some people who was using blunderbust fire staff into this dungeon but you're gonna see there's like a smoke that if you get the power up before the dungeon when you pass into like a smoke you're gonna get a buff and you're gonna do more dps and a lot of people don't do that so getting a leaderboard run in this dungeon is like cheesy a bit if you do it like that but at the same time it's the way to do it you know uh, the ability splitting grenade are pretty good uh, the dps is nice and this one is aoe too uh, you can do a chaos build if you really want to play blunderbuss and you need to drop some blunderbuss but uh, remember that it's not optimized and if the people in your group say that your dps are shit you kind of have to say yes my dps are shit so yeah you can do that build for dungeon or you can go with the martar build but uh, i would not even take you in my lobby if you are not my friend for my friend it's different i'm i'm willing to have some blunderbuss into it and uh for the boss fight the blunderbuss have a good single target dps 
so pulling out a blunderbuss for a boss fight would be a good thing. Mostly that the blunderbuss gonna scale of strength and there is not a lot of strength weapon for distance. So yeah the strength weapon for distance are kinda only the hatchet and the blunderbuss and then if you have some decks you can put the bow in that. So I would say that those three weapon are some of the worst. But in two boss fight to become some of the best depending what's the boss fight. Into Iniad, you kind of want a bow or a blunderbuss or a musket. It does the difference. Seriously, same for the fire staff. Like the range, those ranged weapon into a boss fight gonna be good. The only thing about fire staff is you're gonna have to respect most of the time because uh, if you're a rapier user, maybe you're not gonna have to respect. But remember that the rapier is only at its strongest if you use a split attribute between dex and intellect so if you have some dex and put out a fire staff it don't work and same if you have a spear and a rapier it don't really work too because but you're gonna put some intel on your spear nah bro it just don't work so the flail is one of the worst pv weapon but uh Here's some empower into it and some enfeebling into it. If you do that build right there, you're gonna be able to DPS into dungeon and it's more gonna be a support weapon. I say that it's usable. You, you can use it and this build it's okay, but only one per group max. And if you do that, make sure you have a spear with it just to help with the CC or a great sword. So don't do like flail great axe, it's just, nah bro, you don't use the flail as a main weapon. Uh, yeah, the life staff is the life staff, as a DPS you don't use that, but in every comp you need it, it's a life staff. Uh, so yeah, I think I just did all that for the attribute, if you are into a pug group, don't be scared of putting 200 con and do the rest of your split uh, right now the split is wrong too uh, I just put some gear on myself and I did not respect so yeah so for that it more you're gonna have a good, good group more you can go less con but remember that going to 150 con is bad in PvE because 10% to crit scale damage taken is only good in PvP so it's 200 con or 100 and less. If you see someone with 150 con, you don't know what he's doing. And yeah, it's not good for your group. So it's one or the other and nothing else. You don't want that in PvE. So yeah, make sure that you either have sacred and RT. Mostly sacred is the most important thing for him. On the life staff, make sure he have blessed. Uh, it's one of the most important thing for him again. The tank, make sure he have carnelian into the weapon. All right. Carnelian is that red gem. It it changed everything. Refreshing move on the sword. It changed everything. So if your tank have refreshing move on the sword, then Carnelian, he know what he's doing, all right? So sword and shield is the best meta. If you see your tank having sword and shield, it's gonna be better. And make sure you have fortified shield rush or accelerated result, that shit's gonna help. Before the, the melee DPS, make sure that the spear user are using enfeebling. And if they don't have it, make sure they have it on their great axe or anything. Uh, if no one has been feeling it's still possible to run dungeon, but it's gonna be way harder. So yeah, make sure to have at least one great axe in your group, and maybe more. If all your DPS have a great axe, it's not a waste. It's gonna be nice. It just make the dungeon easier. So I think that's enough for this video. Maybe I might make a part two on that. But for the moment, it's everything I had to say. 
uh, make sure your tank is done with the pool before pulling stuff or start to heal because you're gonna get the aggro of him and he's not gonna have the time to pull a taunt and if you wonder why you have hard time to clump them up together it's gonna be your fault peace out